In month six, the mirror offers a less startling image if I face it squarely. Some imagination, I still see my old shape. Shift angles and shift perspectives. These days, I find myself wishing for the old familiarity in form and function. A waist that fits behind the steering wheel, hamstrings that fire reliably to hold me upright in a deep lunge, spinal joints that stay aligned, one above the other, all of the usual long train buttons and levers to push and pull with expected results an old-fashioned voting machine. Read the name, pull the switch, and hear the satisfying mechanical clunk. No ambiguous chads. Like that, I want to know that I can trust the outcomes when I move my body. And if I'm honest, I want the same kind of reliability when I move into the classroom. I want the world, or at least my history course, divided in neat, clean-cut parcels of equal weight and depth. I want easy assessment. Bubbles on a page, answers in black and white, a simple mathematical formula with only one answer. Life and teaching in an easy and reliable package. But the truth is, my body was never as fully tame as I remember it, even before I shared space with the second being. My body was a site of ongoing growth and radical, unpredictable change. Then, as now, each day found me in a new body, attempting to rediscover what I learned yesterday. My Achilles tendon wasn't yet clicking when the knot in my back wasn't pulling on my scapula, and when my wandering attention was more easily focused. Each day then becomes another effort at expanding the map of my own internal landscape, even by a square moon. So as a dancer, I know better than to expect clear boundaries between yes and no, black and white. In general, dancers tolerate ambiguity well, thrive on it sometimes. We train for uniformity, but we value the ingenious problem-solving ability of individual bodies. When the view grows stale, we change place in the room and see from new angles. We watch bodies on the stage and we leap from concrete image to metaphorical suggestion. Leap. My body used to know how to do that. Metatarsals digging into the floor, brief weightlessness, joints folding neatly to return me upright. An ideal scenario, one that seldom played out perfectly in practice, but a familiar one. Now I tread in unexplored territory. I wince when a joint slips unexpectedly. I ask open-ended questions in life and in the classroom. And sometimes, my students, I don't know the answers, which sends us diving back into the text or watching the same video through a new lens, searching for the bridge that connects Isadora Duncan to the Russian ballet, or the Russian ballet to the Olympic ice dancing, and ultimately the bridge next each of us to the next idea that straightens our spines and leads us forward in anticipation. In the end, I can only guess what is taking shape inside me, a grainy black and white image, a skull, a spine, a nose that might look like mine. And I can only guess what is taking shape in my a vibrant scene with the cerulean blue and glittering gold of a Leon Bax backdrop, or a stunted fruit shriveled before it is half formed. I get clues now and again, 
nodding heads and the suit question eyes that widen in sudden recognition. But even the best tests and paper assignments cannot tell me the full extent of it. My job then is to do what a dancer knows how to do, to dwell in the unfamiliar and to bring my students along with me. It's uncomfortable here and sometimes unprofitable, the gamble but sometimes rich beyond what we could expect. Unreliable, unpredictable, unsafe. But I believe that making peace with the discomfort can lead us to creative ends. A new child, the next big idea, or simply a fleeting moment of illumination in the midst of our education. Thank you.